the bottom, they throw it down, I rebuild it. I give myself a task, you can bet your ass I fulfill it. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Willis, one of the realists. CH-47, that dual rotor one, yeah. they turned it into an Airbnb. Yeah. That's what I was seeing them on. Uh, so, I started, so I started looking it up. I couldn't, like, I found three or four of them. They're like $5 million. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for, like, a wrecked one. <laughs> I just want the shell. I'm like, surely, nope. You can get, like, the Hueys, the Vietnam Hueys. I think a Huey would be great for a treehouse. There's three of them sitting in Kentucky. Right. And be we great can get, for a treehouse. I would love a Huey treehouse. We can, the, you can get all three of them. I think it was about 20 grand. There's no turbine in it. Right, obviously. no. It's a treehouse. But, yeah, it's got, it's got the whole front and cargo. It's like yeah. the, 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 you know, the front part. One's got the boom, but none of them have rotors on them. There were no that's, rotors. That's all right. I, don't need, I just want a treehouse. I sent them to you. You did, yeah. yeah. Gint, I don't have twenty thousand dollars for a treehouse. Gint's got them. He, they're at some surplus place yeah. by him. We should go check them out. Yeah, yeah. I want a, a Huey tree. That would be so awesome. I don't. You know what? Hey, if I could get a Huey treehouse, I think I could figure out a way where I would just live in it full time. The number one asked awesome. question, and it was the first thing I asked James. I'm like, how come there's not a helicopter out at the range to repel out of? And he'd always give you some. We're we're a gun shooting school. We're yeah. a gun fighting school. The truth is, James was scared of heights. James went to SWAT school, and they didn't let him graduate SWAT school because he wouldn't rappel out of the tower. He's like, I don't have any three-story buildings in my town. I don't need this. But James, <laughs> James is, just doesn't like heights. That's the real. That's the real deal. Sometimes, sometimes that's all it is. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and we had a kid. We had a kid that uh, we. I really, really. He was. A, he was a great kid. Really wanted him to be in the sniper platoon, and he did the whole in doc. And then uh, he did the hole in dock, and then he had to jump off the tower at the swimming pool. That was the last thing. All you had to do was jump in the water, swim to the side, and boom, you're the, in the, the high, the high tower. Yeah, the high tower, and boom, you're in. Right, that's the only thing he had, and he would not jump off that tower. He just wouldn't jump. He would not jump. And we, were, I was like, I think, it, I think this was even when Chris was there. I was like, just push him. <laughs> but he wouldn't jump off the tower, and it was so bad because we were, we were, again. We wanted him in the platoon. So everybody's down there just like, jump, jump. And then at Camp Horno, the motor, the motor pool is right behind the swimming pool. So the motor pool is right behind the swimming pool. And, you and you know, we're probably 10 minutes into trying to convince this kid to just jump off the, off the thing. And then you hear over the motor pool PA loudspeaker, hey, pussy, just jump. <laughs> Did he ever jump? Nope. So he never made the platoon? Never made it. Didn't so what it. happened to him? Do we know? Oh, I don't know what happened to him. I mean, once you get once you get cut, you're cut. You so we would go. We would go to the officers' club. Had a pool at. I think it was Miramar. Probably Miramar. And they had a high board up yeah. there. But I don't remember. Is it wasn't stairs, right? It's a ladder. I'm I, sure. I don't was, remember I, yeah, how you a, get up there. It's just a ladder. It's just a side ladder. But it's way the fuck up there. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's the um, uh, it's the Marine Corps version of jumping off the side of an aircraft carrier. Oh, okay. So that's basically what that's basically the point of that. The reason why they have that that high, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's twenty feet. I don't know how high it is. It's it's, 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 it's fucking pretty, high. It's up there. But the the point of that was you're doing a uh, you're you're doing. It's basically training to jump off the side of the ship if your ship is sinking. Ah, uh-huh. see, I never knew that. Yeah, there's a whole technique. You got to hold your hold your face over your nose, cross your legs, and go in the water but and i think they made us do it in boot camp i don't remember i'm pretty sure they made it do it boot camp so i don't know why he didn't do it but yeah people people were scared of heights and then he was probably scared of the water too as a because he are you telling me he wasn't white uh, well he was that what you're saying he, he wasn't he, a white kid he wasn't hispanic that's for sure got it so uh <laughs> that, that was always the joke with the seals but i mean they got plenty, plenty of brothers that are seals now true true Although maybe they just let nowadays they just you, they just go club him over the head and he's like you're a Navy SEAL now. No, because you got to go through dive phase and dive phases. Do they it, have to? It's pretty do they rough. really have to be able to swim nowadays in the Navy? In the Navy, if you're a black guy, no. But in the Navy, you said I'm, Navy. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they have to have so many brothers as Navy SEALs. No, there's no quota for Navy SEALs. Like they got to have trannies. No, there's I no guarantee quote. it. There's no quote. I guarantee you there's training seals. There's no co- well, just, well, there was a, actually that dude it's just, retransitioned. He was on Sean Ryan's show. That dude. Yeah, he's out, he's out, of, the, he's mm-hmm. out of the training world. Yeah, Ben actually knew that dude pretty well. Yeah. 
yeah, they. Uh, it seems to me that which is it, which is going to be a lot of these cases in the future, that they um, they exploited that the VA exploited him for their their own purposes and wasn't really didn't really have his best interests in in, in any of it. The so. VA wouldn't do that. Yeah, they would. Come yeah. on. Yeah, they would. Come the VA, on. The they wouldn't. Would they wouldn't give you a vaccination and. Really, it's an experimental th- something completely different. They wouldn't do that. No, they would do that. No, yeah, no. They do it all the time. They don't have prison cages at VA hospitals. That that's not real. I don't think so. You don't think what? That they have prison cages? I can take you to one. I don't think so. I don't I think can, they have prison cages. I can show you. I think that's just where they keep the experimental monkeys. Maybe, maybe so. So no, high- you know what the interesting thing about VA hospitals is? Because I had to go to the one in Nashville. You know, there's some closed ones. The closed one in Nashville. Yeah. Well, I had to go to one in Nashville. And the interesting thing about VA hospitals is they all look like they've been built they were built in the 60s. Yes. <laughs> and the closed down ones have a, a high fucking level of security for a closed down fucking hospital. Really? Yes. An unusual amount of traffic for a fucking closed down. Well, let's facility. go. If they have an unusual amount of traffic, that can only mean one thing. Monkey experiments. Uh they well monkeys have been replaced. Where do you think all those transients went from California? I don't know. China, probably. There. I think I actually think that Uyghur Muslims that uh, that Gavin Newsom, because of because of what a terrible person he is, that he brokered a deal with the Chinese and he shipped all of them to China. Mm, maybe. And they're they're probably feeding them to people because right because they're bringing all those one way vessels over. Now yeah. they got a now yeah. they got a return. They just cargo. shipped them to China. That's all. So the high board was pretty high, but once you jumped off of it the first time, it's just <laughs> you just couldn't get out of the pool fast enough to climb. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As a kid, I remember going over there. Yeah, it was fun. It, I mean, it you know, it is what it is. Some people can do it, some people can't. There's always that one thing, right? The one I stutter at heights. I stutter. Yeah. There's always that one thing that. Did you ever go people. do the um, the bungee jump off? No. One sixty three. There, they had them on uh-huh. both sides. Man, we did that fucking dozens of times. Yeah, never never done bungee jumping. And the when they go up and they they're like, okay, this is how you hang on, and then the dude who clipped you in. He would just jump off, like, without a harness, right? Because they had the airbags underneath. They would oh. just... Hmm. They're like, you can't get hurt here. There's there's no way. Even even if this thing fails, You're gonna this the airbag... Because they'd jump off with no harness or anything. They'd just Man, jump off in the airbag. I'm sure that that, is, I'm sure that, that was super not OSHA certified. <laughs> I, don't, I mean... I'm sure they were not supposed to do that. I mean, it used to, we used to build high-rise steel buildings in a, in a year. Now yeah. it takes, you know, well, that's many just years. It's because if you're, if, if there, if you've worked in graft, so if you've worked in a way to steal money, it has to take longer because people don't, if, if I told you we're going to, if I told you I'm going to spend a million dollars and build you a tower out here and I did it in a, in a week, right? In your head, you could be like, dollars is, you could do the math and be like million dollars is this many hours. You could figure it out, but if I if I make the if I make the project super long, if I make it super long, and then halfway through the project I'm like, uh, yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't account for the inflation of uh, hot glue and sticky notes. We're gonna need another hundred thousand dollars. You're like fuck. All right, get it finished, and you hunt another hundred thousand. It's just the way it's just the way graft works. You the longer the project is, the more graft you can have involved. It's like the fucking it's like the damn super rail the the super train that they're building in California. They've spent billions and billions of dollars on that thing and they don't have shit to show for it. You know it's a dead project. Yeah, I know. They've and they abandoned it. It's a dead project. The train has never wait, run down it. Wait, it's a dead project that they're still paying money for. So a train's never run down. Oh. The tracks don't connect. Nope. And they killed out over 1,200 fucking farms all through there. They eminent domained all those almond farms and the avocados and shit. Literally went in and cut off the water to those places. So those some of those almond farms have been around for, you know, 100 years, over 100 years, some of them. And they're just, they're gone now. And the train never occupied. Of course not. Because it was a government-run thing, and the government is inefficient in everything they do. I was recently talking to somebody. I don't remember who it was. And, and was, Feinstein was stealing all that money anyways. He said, like, unions. He said, if, if you come in as a, a company working on a union project, 
and you finish too fast, they'll actually take you to court and they'll all kinds yes. of problems and shit because you outperformed what at the yes. rate they wanted you to perform. And basically it makes them look bad and they can't draw it out and get all their fucking right. their bullshit. Um, but the general consensus, when you talk to somebody who works for, for a union, they're like, it's fucking terrible. Like you don't, you don't want to be in a union when you talk to the union employees. I don't know. I know some union employees that like the fact that they get paid no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Electrician, what? electrician, uh, union guy. Yeah. Yeah. In San Diego. Hmm. And he likes the fact that he doesn't have to work, that he doesn't have to, he, he doesn't ha really have to work and gets paid no matter what. Do you remember when we started doing, um, like soldier of fortune show and shot uh -huh. show? Yeah. So that's the teamsters, teamsters that brings all that shit in. Right. That's so, the mob. Yeah. Well, we would bring it, we would, we would park five blocks away and carry 45 pound, you know, mannequin bases and yeah. super kit bags in full of gear. Um, and we just, you know, get in the side door, some, some security guard smoking or whatever. And it was all like, like dudes would chase us trying to fucking bring kit bags. And they're like, no, you have to palletize that. And we got to bring it in with our yeah. forks and you got to, and, and you basically you have to pay them to, to bring, bring that in, shit yeah. in. And, um, Man, it was always a, like, that was the most sketchy part of setting up for one of those shows. Like, it's getting the shit are in, we going to yeah. get arrested for a, a booth that we paid $10,000 for, but, you know, we just couldn't afford, like, we couldn't afford $10,000 for the booth, much less to pay them to bring our shit in and then be there on their schedule and everything. What's the, what podcast is this? Oh, what up? Did um, we even start? 53? 53. You, you put up three fingers, though. So five, uh, three is 53. I don't know how you got 52 out of that. I mean. Pulling the Thread podcast episode 52. I think your eyes are still adjusting to the light because you went 53. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, dos. Santa Marini, Santa Centavos, por favor. Keep your hands and feet inside the cart at all times and no flash photography. True. Did you see the naked guy on uh, It's a Small World? No. Oh, yeah. Dude jumped off the boat. Got naked? Got naked. Nice. Yeah, you get naked in front of kids, I think they should just kill you right nice. then. Are there any kids writing It's a Small World? That's true. I mean, what what, I mean, what, yeah, what, what in their right mind human being takes their child I feel to like, Disneyland? I feel like because of that ride, I feel like he was probably on that boat alone. <laughs> wow. That's why he got naked. Because he was all alone in the small world running around, running around with the... Small world mannequins. You've that could seen, be dangerous back there. Those robots. Have you seen all? The, have you ever seen uh, when the 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 latex and the skin comes off the robots? Yeah, they're pretty creepy. They're super creepy. Pretty creepy. Like that uh, ghost town in the sky. Is that is that in Tennessee here? It's on the border of North Carolina. So if you look at those robot cowboy dudes, um, all the skins off them, dude, mm -hmm. it is the craziest looking shit. Yeah. And they they're super. They're super crazy about that too, like chasing dudes down and arresting them over that shit. You would think if you would think those dudes would just pay you if you just like, what's the big deal? I mean, the place is closed down. I mean, they've probably got something something shady going on up there. There's probably meth labs or it's uh, it's insurance and liability. It's theft and arson. That's why they're keeping those people out of there because first off. You know, most of the most of the explorers that are out there are not cool like Brandel and are just going to take pictures and walk away. They're going to do some sort of fucking damage. Um, that is everywhere we go, man. They're going to do some sort of damage because they're assholes. And again, if uh, Karen is up there trying to get a selfie next to the mannequin and it falls on her, the first thing she's going to think about is I should sue these people because there's no way I should have been allowed to be in here. And there's going to be a judge who's going to want to do it. So that really is why most places are trying to keep people out is liability and theft. So if we just fix, if we fixed the legal system, if you, if you are committing, if you are injured on a property where you committed a crime to be on the crop property, there shouldn't be any lawsuit ability. True, true. But it's just the mere fact that, so for example, if uh, the mannequin fell on Randall and he tried to sue the company because he shouldn't have been able to get in there to take those pictures in the first place. Even if he loses the case, you're still out money. Yeah, I know. So it's it, in the in the long run, it's cheaper to just hire some, you know, local crackheads to chase people off. It's just like little Scoopy Doop fucking breaks in your house. 
and you fucking smoke that fool. And they're like, justifiable, yeah, justifiable. You, 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 Good job. Kill the next one, fool. Yeah, you got to have but the money. Then the to family, def- but then the family can fucking sue you. You have to have the money to defend yourself in court either way. So it's a. Why don't you have your sl- judge friends fix that? It's a slippery slope because judges can't fix that. Who fixes it? Um, lawmakers fix it. Got to burn down the system. And lawmakers are not going to fix it because. Anarchy! Too many people are making money. How did anarchy become little shithead skaters with fucking spray paint cans? Why do they have to be shitheads? Well, most of like that, the little typical people, people have hijacked the word anarchy. They don't realize what it really means. Do you like my shirt? I do. That's a good one. We have another one coming. But you might not want to wear that. Why? Did, would you hear about the guy who, did you hear about, you didn't, you didn't see the news? Are we going to talk about Washington, D.C.? You, you didn't see the news that where he the blew Asian himself guy? up? The Asian guy? Yeah. Do you see what he was listed, what his job was listed on LinkedIn as? Yes. Did you see all his postings about yes. his fucking, his spy neighbors and yeah. shit? And you see he blew himself up. So. I don't think he blew himself up. I think he blew himself up. Mm-mm. He blew himself up. It's classic. I mean, it's it's the baller. The reality is what he did was super baller. Like if you. Tell Brando what happened. Um, so just recently, a police department. Asian dude. Decided that they were going to raid this guy's house. Well, apparently he was launching mortars earlier in the evening, launching fireworks and shit. Doing something, you know, being a being a being a uh, a nuisance. Being an American, and they uh, they raided his house. They went to raid his house, and he fired a flare gun and blew his house completely off the street. Okay, so total baller move, like dude. It, it there's some video of some shit coming in from the side. You see an angle this way, and you see an angle this way. Totally, total baller move. And the word is that the police were launching less lethal. They fired over 30 rounds, apparently, into this place. And, dude, when it exploded, it exploded, like, everything around it. Like, it enveloped everything It just blew his house sides. completely up. Now, so, okay, I want you to think about this. If you, if you were attempting... Cop suicide, right? So if you're, because again, if you look at his profile, like if you look at his profile and you look at all the things that are going on in his life, that's the direction he's going. He's not, he wasn't like, he wasn't like, I'm in my suit and going to work. I'm happy. I'm drinking my coffee. No, the, he was, he was slowly ballering down to the point where there was going to be police confrontation, right? His life was definitely spinning out of control. If all your posts are about fuck the police, your life is spinning out of control. But they'll weave that story about me. No, I, no, they they wouldn't weave that story about you. Well, maybe because of that shirt. I mean, that shirt might get you balled up, but I, I don't know. You know what the next one's going to say? What? Democrats are ruining everything. That, that's a good. I'll wear that shirt because that's true. Anyways, you crank up the gas in your house, right? It, I don't think it works that way. You crank you crank up the gas in your house, and you wait for the police to attempt to make entry. Okay. Now the, the issue becomes ignition source. You can crank up the gas in your house and not blow your house up because it takes, it takes vol, you know, it takes trap volume in order to really blow your house up. But if you shoot a flare gun, right, it's, it's basically just a huge match and that's what blew his house up. Now, the reason why, here's the thing. The reason why I say, like, John's like, oh, they fired a missile at him or all this other stuff. The reason why I say that what happened is what happened is because if you're going to make up a story, right, if you're going to make up a story about how Brandel blew himself up in his house, flare gun is nowhere in the, it's not in the zeitgeist, right? It's not one of those things where people are like, yeah, he fired a flare gun at me. You, you, it's not a, it's not a thing that you would use to make that story up. Is he inside or? <laughs> yeah, he's inside of the house. Yeah, they were, they were attempting to, they were attempting to hit the house with the, uh, with the. Yeah, I know. I saw, I saw a hundred of those videos. They were attempting to hit the house. Oh, Brandel needs to see it. I, I thought I sent it to him. They were attempting to hit the house with the, uh, <clears throat> with the bear cat. Right? They were gonna, they were gonna breach the door with the bear cat, and it's a officer on the ground that's like i fired a flare gun at us. <laughs> that's just so baller man that's baller that is baller there's actually if you want to look at gas videos 
There's actually a pretty good one from California where they had a uh, four foot four foot main gas line that was running through this neighborhood, and it had a leak, but it was in, it was pocketed in the leak. And same thing, door camera footage of the of you know whoever walking out of his house with a cigarette and blowing up the whole fucking neighborhood. We should get a gas guy to come on. And do what? Just what does it Blow take? Yeah, up. what is it? No, not just like what the what the reality. They and did what a, the... They actually did a really good. Um, they actually did a really good MythBusters about it, where they they created a room and then showed what it takes to get the, to get uh, the gas to ignite. And that's why I say, if you watch that MythBusters issue or episode, it's kind of even with even with. Uh, a certain amount of gas in an enclosed space, it's still kind of hard to get it to light off. Yeah. And so that's why the, I say the, the flare gun is the baller. So the baller thing to do. Mythbusters. You, you, you always read at the pumps, like uh, ground yourself before you pump gas. Don't have your cell phone. And I remember seeing the Mythbusters are like, this can't be real. Right. And they actually got it to fucking, they got it to blow up. They're like, do not have your cell phone while you're pumping gas at the, at the gas station. I stand there all the time with my cell phone. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's about. Um, I'm sure it's about incoming, incoming and outgoing, actual radio signals. So it's when, about spark. Yeah, when you're when you're on your when you're on it's, your phone and you're looking at. It's about like static electricity, yeah. right? So if you if you touch, uh, if you get it to spark, like when it's you know Santa Ana's yeah. in California, you used to always be able to zap each other. Um, remember when we put the gas stove in here? In here. Yeah, in the, in oh, the yeah, shop, yeah, 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 yeah. we bought that gas. <laughs> that gas. Were you here when they delivered that? Uh, I don't know if I was here when they delivered. It was that. like a fucking three ring circus. They had like eight people in a Ford Ranger. Yes, I was here when they delivered that. It was like it, it, it was like the fucking Beverly Hillbillies in there, and they dropped that off, and they brought a bunch of other appliances, and they're like, "Do you want to buy this?" I'm like, "Nope, I just want the stove." And they had loaded the stove first, first, so, so they had to else. unload all the other shit, hoping yeah. we'd buy it. So he, he had a refrigerator laid down. He had all this shit in a Ford Ranger. It was stacked up like twice as high as the truck. And uh, I'm like, I, I can't buy this refrigerator. You've had it laid down. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Oh, it'll, it'll work. It'll work. I promise you. I'm like, but I can't turn it on because you had it laid down. So we, we plumb this in and our gas guys are awesome. Like, I don't know if this is everywhere, but the gas guys come out and will actually hook up the hook up to the stove and put your valves and everything. And I don't know if that was just for us or if that happens for everybody, but they hooked it all up and it's a standing pilot. So if you go look at the stove, there are six big <laughs> cast iron burners. So you know where I'm going with this yes. and they all have a flame running, right? Cause it, it's always on. And then when you turn the valve, it opens it up and go, and that stove will melt metal pans. It is, it gets like, it, it will melt a fucking metal pan if you turn it all the way on. So we're coming back. We, we leave on the weekends and shit. And we come back. I'm like, I smell gas. Like, it smells like gas in here in the building. So we make our way to the kitchen and all the burners are off. So we'll go and click, 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 relight all the burners. No big deal. And it continues to happen. Well, for weeks. For weeks. <laughs> like, even at, at, during the day, at yeah. night, we come yeah. in. Every time we come in the building, the, bur- the building like, smells like gas. It smells like gas in here. Well, Sebastian, babyhead, was blowing them out because he thought it was dangerous and he didn't, he didn't want the fire there. So he would blow. This went on for fucking weeks. weeks. I don't weird. know what made him finally tell us. Which is weird because uh, it is actually weird that, I guess because of the volume of the building, uh, you, just, you just never oversaturated. But when you think about it, so he was blowing out the ones on top, mm-hmm. but the one in, in the, the bottom in the bottom was still on. Yeah. So, I mean, if the if that if that kitchen if that kitchen area because it's small enough, if it was if the doors would have been closed, you probably would have lost half the building. <laughs> well, I mean, we've had that thermal coupler in the bottom has gone out four times. Like yeah. we've replaced three of them back to back to back to back, and you got to hit a torch so it superheats up so that it ignites that and, and runs. So in theory, if that thermal coupler's out, that oven should be filling with gas, right? Or maybe it has a safety cutoff or something. So I don't that, know. That, maybe a safety cutoff. I don't know. Because I, I don't know. But you just have to. The, the issue always becomes the saturation level. If you have enough airflow, 
So you're, you know, th- those doors are always open. And so you probably, even with the pi- even with the pilot lights out, you probably didn't have enough saturation to get that explosion. So you think, so what, what warrant were they serving, do you think? I don't, I don't think they were serving a warrant. I think, the, I think. Uh, they went with a bear cat and no, but serving I, a no, warrant? No, I think what happened, because again, you have cell phone videos from different neighbors. I think what happened was the police showed up and the police couldn't get response. And so then SWAT was called. And then the Bearcat showed up. And that, if you think about the time that it takes for all that to happen, that would have given them enough time to, to uh, prep up that house. So I think it was just, a again, because we're watching TikTok shorts, so you think that that, oh, shit, this must have just happened. How many bodies sure, How many bodies were found? I have no idea. I am sure that that, uh, you know, that that event, like if you really pull it up, I'm sure that event was hours long. It wasn't have, they, a, have they sold them off as a white supremacist yet? They have not, which is interesting. Well, this, you, but you don't have you, you don't know have what to, this really is. You don't have to sell them off as a white supremacist because he, you know, they they've already categorized Asians as white if they're doing something bad. You know, you know what the word on the street is. What he had information on Hillary. You haven't seen all those memes no, out uh-uh. there. Yeah, yeah. Hillary, Hillary. This it's part Hillary. of Hillary's Hillary's hit list. Hillary's crew. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a pretty good video. I mean. Uh, it's a tragic video of somebody blowing himself up. But. They were just right there ready to fucking have all angles. Go. I guess it's impossible. Everything has an angle now. Yeah. I mean, there's cameras fucking everywhere. everywhere. And everybody, you know, as soon as, as soon as you're, because we are a, uh, a, you know, a multimedia nation now, as soon as you see anything going on, you're, you know, I don't want to say you're a particular, but most people's reaction is video, not help. You know the funny thing about this. So, so flare launchers, what they're saying. Here's yeah. launching flares. You know, there's a uh, some bill that they're some new law they're trying to put in, or I guess it's in because all the gun channel guys, uh, gadgets and gear, did a video about it a couple of weeks ago, maybe even last week. They have this this vague terminology that would actually ban um, flare launchers and boat flares and stuff like that. And one of the things he said, he said, you know, that this is written so vaguely that it would encompass all of these things, but the Coast Guard says that you have to have these on a vessel. So it's it's just interesting that they're trying to ban all this shit. Well, what it would be is, uh, it's it's not necessarily, well, I guess it could be a ban, but what it would be, it would be a rider. They're, well, they're, it would be a rider so that, so for example. They just terminated and, and illegalized, illegalized all of those smokes and flashbangs, which were complete shit anyways. Right. All of the, the smokes that we had the Patriot smokes. Um, we bought the smokes from that Russian company. Were you here when we when we? Yeah, we're throwing them. We if dude if 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 we threw thirty of those things, only twelve of them worked. Yeah. I mean they popped, but they didn't fucking even work. So they were fucking a, a toy at best. But that's what they were after was all that shit. Well, anything that anything that can start a fire. But uh, what'll happen with the when you're talking about flares and shit like that? is you'll still be required to have them on your boat. You'll still be required to have them on your boat. And in that in that arena, it'll be outside the scope of the law. What they're where you're you're fucked is when you're at home and you have a flare gun in your garage because that is the right. thing that they're so going they'll after. categorize it like burglary tools. Yeah. Why do you have these tools in your vehicle? Oh clearly you're gonna yeah. convert it. it's a burglary tool. So I don't know. Whatever. I don't have a boat, so I don't need a flare. Do I have a flare launcher? Well, you can, I have a mini. Because you can walk into launcher. Walmart and buy a plastic fucking yeah. flare pistol with flares. They, you can I have buy a, them in I a have mini. It shoots a little. You have the little pilot survival one? Yeah. Yeah, those, those were cool. Yeah. Yeah, those were cool. They came but with seven flares, flares I, think, I think, on yeah. there. We launched like a hundred of those. at. at um, <laughs> we actually caught the farm field on fire at uh, Dwayne's house. We, we had just got them. In Iraq, so they were giving out laser. They were giving out laser dazzlers, and so you know, if you've seen any pictures of the vehicles in Iraq, there was always that big sign on the back Labid. that said "fucking stay back a hundred feet, or we're gonna blast you." And the problem, the problem with um, telling eighteen to twenty-five year olds, if something gets closer than a hundred feet, you can blast them. 
is 18 to 25 year olds will blast them. And so all these, <laughs> all these Iraqis are getting blasted because they don't know what the fuck that sign says on the back of the truck. I mean, realistically, if you think about it, they got to get closer than a hundred feet to read it anyways. And so they don't know what the fuck the sign says. And, and they're just trying to get through their day and they're hauling ass up to the back of this Humvee and that kid on the 50 cows is going to let it happen. Um, and so, so they, they come up with all these rules where you have to fucking, you have to dazzle them with the laser. Well, again, they don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like they, they're just trying to get to work. <laughs> and this isn't a, this is not an eye safe laser either. I am sure that the lasers they were issuing out to us were not eye safe, but they were, these weren't military lasers. They, they basically, you know, this was a, this was a stopgap measure to keep kids from blasting people on the road. So they just, f- so they just blinded them instead. No, they were just buying lasers from fucking, I am sure they were buying lasers from, uh, what's that? Arctic laser. No. What's that place that you buy all the Chinese shit? This mini, the mini fold out, um, barbed wire. Amazon? No, the other place. You're thinking Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba. I am sure that they just bought a million lasers from Alibaba. Um, I have one of them somewhere. Because they were cheap bullshit ones, but you were supposed to dazzle them with the laser. And the dazzle with the laser wasn't working. And so they're like, okay, we're going to issue everybody these little flare guns. All right? We're going to issue, we're going to, everybody, all the gunners are going to have these flare guns. And so you can dazzle them with the laser. And if they get close, you can shoot a flare at them. And then you can shoot your gun at them. So when I first got night vision 30 years ago, had an IR illuminator on it, right? So I'd stand in the gas station at the mobile gas station in the dark and look at it, turn the IR on, and it would back back, right? And you'd be like, you'd feel fucked up and kind of dizzy, you know, because it's reflecting back. But those weren't like non-eye, that was just infrared. That was not like a a blind you laser, luckily. And then fast forward, they had these... uh, blue arctic or arctic fox or something i've got it's a it's a fucking blue i think it's blue i've got two of them um laser and like dudes were fucking up aircraft with them and shit but if you they come with glasses you're supposed to before you even turn it on you're supposed to put these glasses on because they're not eye safe like if if you get yourself with it or reflect off a mirror or a light like you're blind like just you're done there's no fixing it you're just done done and they were selling those things they were only like I don't know, 200 bucks or so. And like, it'll pop balloons. It'll light shit on fire. Right. You, you can could, still get them. Yeah. I have two of them you sitting in there. Them. But I mean, that's, that's one of those things, man. It's like, man, I'd rather shoot myself in the leg by accident than fucking get shot in the eye with that thing. Well, we had, uh, so they, they issued those little flare guns to all the gunners and we had not. So the, and I know they're going to, I know people are going to be out there. That's not true. But it's 100% true. The military the military in general is notorious, notorious for coming up with some sort of new fangled thing, a new piece of kit that they're going to issue to everybody, especially in a combat environment where they're just like, here, here's this thing. If this thing happens, shoot it over there. It'll be good. Where they, they do know there's no training. There's really like a lot of times they will give you some piece of kit and they won't even tell you, they won't even, they won't even be like, this is how you use it, and this is when you're supposed to use it. They just, they're like, here you go. Flamethrowers, everybody gets one. <laughs> and they just, that's how they do it. Well, again, we had ju- literally just got, they, they had just given all the gunners, the lasers and the and the flare gun, the little, the little pin flare guns. Everybody's getting into this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, weapons company crew is getting ready to go out and do a convoy. Everybody's getting in their truck. They're checking all their shit. Kid gets his flare gun. He's checking his flare gun. Boom, shoots himself right in the face with it. <laughs> Inside the Humvee. Inside the Humvee. Fucking right in the face. Day one. And then so they, I can't remember what they did. They did something where it was like, you know, because again, what was the purpose of the flare? It was to stop a vehicle from approaching close enough that it could IED blow the fuck out of you. And so... They put so many safety protocols on just the flare thing that it, like, and by the time it's one of those things, by the time you check the boxes, laser, 
Let me get the flare gun out of the fucking glove compartment. Attach flare. By the time you do it, it's useless anyway. So it's just, that's how. That's and these how literally works. were the black anodized. Yeah, the black anodized. The pilot survival pilot ones. Pilot survival ones, yeah. Yeah, with the little flare. So he got life flighted out because he had a flare in his mouth. Oh, shit. It actually yeah, it went, it fucked him up. Yeah, it fucked him up. We're Are we recording? back? Are we recording? We're back. Episode 53. Good. 54, maybe? I don't know. Cinco One. dos. Cinco dos. Why are you counting with your fingers? When you count with your fingers, are you doing it in English or Spanish? Spanish. Italian. Italian. And then you translate it into Spanish and then English? Russian. Russian. Good. How come uh, everything's just kind of like died out over in Israel? Uh, No. It hasn't died out? No. Israelis are doing exactly. Israelis, here's a fun fact. Go ahead and watch episode 45. The Israelis are doing exactly what I said they were going to do. Bulldozers? They're fucking systematically going through Gaza from the top to the bottom, and they are killing everybody. They're doing exactly what I told, said so they were going to do. And you know what they don't need? So why They don't need we, aircraft carriers. So why are we over there? Because we are doing that classic. Did you play baseball? You ever play baseball? You play baseball? I know, I know the US, baseball. Okay. The U.S. is doing that classic. You know when you got a, you know when you got a, uh, you got a runner on third, and John's coming up to bat, and you know he can't hit. John can hit it right out of the park. And you know John can't hit out of the park. You can't even. It's, you don't have a chance to catch it. it. The John can't hit the ball, and you know they so, had to put chain link fence on the top of the stadium. So the coach is like, so the coach is like, the coach is on the side going. Trying to get John to lean in, <laughs> trying to get him to lean in, <laughs> lean in a little bit. That's all. That's all that the U.S. is doing. The U.S. is over there right now, trying to lean in and have some shit happen, so they could be like, "Oh, we got to go to war because the fucking Houthis fired a fucking ballistic missile at us." It's just, it's a bunch of fucking horse shit. There is no reason for. There's not a reason for a single U.S. ship to be anywhere in that area. Not necessary. When are they going to have to put out the new globes? What new globes? The ones that don't have Ukraine on it. Uh, Ukraine is going to. What is going to happen? You know, so we've given Ukraine one hundred and twelve billion dollars. Oh, way more than that. Okay, well, the number they Wait said, the number I heard was one hundred and twelve. No, that's that's okay, not. Even so let's say it's one hundred and twelve. Mm-hmm. They're about to give them one hundred and twenty billion more. Yeah. No, they, the first you have to understand, John. People aren't paying attention to what is really going on. The first payment, the first payment we gave Ukraine, the first one, was more money than we spent uh-huh. in Afghanistan yeah. and Iraq. Yeah. That was the first payment. We've paid them 10 times more than that. That's your people in office realize that they're about to be fucking terminated, exterminated, no, excommunicated, it's, it's, whatever, it's, and they're stealing as much more money it, as yes. they can. Yes, it's like uh, Valinsky, uh, Zelensky. He's got three yes. multi-billion dollar yachts. Yeah, he ha- he owns several estates uh, in the United States here. And multi-billion dollar yachts. How how is that possible? It's possible because this is all a fucking Ponzi scheme. You're you you know the if you if you look at what the guys are doing, if you look at the guys on the front line, right? If you look at the guys who are really doing the fighting, some of them got some good kit, but the majority of them are still wearing the same shit they were wearing at the beginning because they're not. This is shit is not going. The money's not going to the fight. The money's going to pay fucking pay off all the motherfuckers that need to get paid off. That's all it is. It's a fucking Ponzi scheme. It's bullshit. And I am glad that this fucking Congress has decided. Again, it sucks for Ukraine. Like, it sucks for Ukraine. But I am glad that at least the Republicans have just a little bit of balls. And they're holding up the appropriation of the next payment. Now, I know they're only holding it up because... They want to figure out how they can get their fucking money. They can get their hands in the pockets and fucking make money. But at least they're holding it up. Yes. Does that suck for Ukraine? It does. But Ukraine is not our problem. So I don't know about now, but when it was first kicking off, Ukrainian chicks on dating apps were hooking up and meeting fucking Russian troops that were fucking. Well, you, I mean, the, the hard part, the hard part of it is it's not like. It's not like, let's, we'll say like America. 
if America was to go to war with Russia. Now, there are ties, right? There, there are certain ties. There are people in the United States that still have family in Russia and things like that. Um, but this is Ukraine and Russia going to war. It's kind of like you and your neighbor going to war. You know, you, you guys hang out on the weekends and fucking have parties and shit. They're not that separate. It's not that, it's not that, I mean, that. It's not the will of the people. It's the well, will of the and, fucking And, you know, governments. the reality is the Ukrainians, when they started, be, yeah. when they, when they're, and they're still using all Russian made equipment, they didn't buy that equipment. That equipment was left when the Soviet Union collapsed. So they, they were part of that family. And so to think that just because, you know, there's a fucking war over here that people down here aren't still crossing the border and buying bread from their Russian. Of course they are. Of course they are. So it's a, it's a soup sandwich, but again, it's not our soup sandwich. When do you think it ends? As soon as we turn the tap off. Well, not, it's not going to, none, none of this shit's been our fucking problem. None, none of it in the middle East was our problem. It's not going to, well, no it, things in the middle East were our problem. And the reason why is not because what people think when people are like, Oh, we went to war for oil. That is not the reason why the Middle East is our problem. The reason why the Middle East has always been our problem is because at the end of World War II, the United States, the biggest navy in the entire world, in order to create peace and prosperity in Europe so Europe could rebuild itself, we we formed an alliance. And one of those alliances was we were going to use the United States Navy to ensure that all naval pathways would be free of problems. So we were securing the ability to move goods around the world. That was the reason why Europe was able to rebuild as fast as it was. That's why our economy grew as fast as it was, because the United States Navy was out there protecting those waterways. The Middle East, you would you would hope that it would be bread and it would be bread and prosperity that we would have to protect. Unfortunately, the Middle East is a shit show, and because it's a shit show, the U.S. Navy and, you know, unfortunately, U.S. Army and Marines have had to had to ensure that those waterways would be free for oil to travel to Europe. Basically, all we were doing was guaranteeing that oil would be able to f- commercially be able to travel to Europe. And so that's why we were always in the Middle East, because we have to guarantee we as a country, in order to create prosperity and stabilization in the entire world, have to ensure that shipping lanes are free from Iranian pirates, Saddam Hussein shutting the tap off. Not because we need it, because Europe needs it. I mean, you saw this, the, shit, the shit show that is Ukraine right now is the shit show that's Ukraine because Europe was fucking scared to death that the Russians were going to turn off the tap. Not because they didn't want war, not because they cared about Ukrainians or whatever, it because they were afraid that the Russians were going to turn off the tap. And so that's what the United States Navy does, is it guarantees the ability of goods to travel anywhere in the world without people worrying about those goods being stolen. Um, and that is the problem with, that is the problem with our shrinking military capabilities, is we aren't force projecting anymore. You know, there was a time just 15 years ago where there was always a carrier group and a Mew sitting in the Persian Gulf somewhere, sitting off the fucking coast of Korea. So there were, they were always out there. They're not anymore because they don't have the capability to, they don't have the capability to move those ships like they used to because of force structure. We got too little, we got too many fucking ships and not enough fucking sailors. Well, because we've weakened the. Well, again, it, it's there's a lot of reasons, but the real the, what's what's the real reason? The real reason is because our birth rates are down. Our birth rates are down, and and we got we guinea have, birds. Fucking we. Well, yeah, we've created a we've created a a society that thinks that everything is free, and that there's no personal sacrifice to get anything, and so your recruiting is down because. So is it the wokeness? Oh you know, yeah, definitely. Wokeness. Woke, wokeness doesn't help any. Most wokeness does not help the military in any way, shape, or form. You just went, you just went through and you took all these people who had been in there fucking 10, 15, 20 years, told them you have to take the science experiment. Yeah. And if you don't take the science experiment, you got to leave. So they left. And now they're like, oh, please come back. 
Well, it's, you know. And then you've got, I mean, you have your miscarriage rate is up. They said, what is the miscarriage rate? 700%? A, I don't know. It's like, they like look these numbers up, but I believe the number is 79% of women in the DOD that get pregnant, miscarriage. Like, they don't fucking even have birth. 79% is the number, I believe. Like, it's fucking insane. Yeah, so it's a it's a shit show. Wokeness does not help the military. If the mil- honestly, if the military wanted to, um, if the military wants to meet its recruiting goals, they really should go right back to 1990, and they should just take all those commercials that they used in 1990, and they should do them all it's over. It's not again. just a job; it's adventure, travel just, to foreign exotic just, lands, you know, meet it, new uh, interesting uh, people, and kill them. Marine jumping off a fucking cliff and stabbing a dragon and killing it. Well, I think Men, that I think they even, have gone back to that. Like you haven't no, seen any of that. They're trying bullshit. to, but they're trying to, but they they the, the Department of Defense needs to really, really clean house and just do the same thing. It's about a mission. It's about mission accomplishment. It's about war fighting. Anything else? Color of your hair? Do you have a penis? Anything else? Kill it. It's not part of what we need to fucking defend this country kill it just make it all about fucking slaying dragons again because the truth is even the even the you know the woke even the woke male that's running around in the united states right now they want to be part of a tribe they want to be part of something better than what they are part of right now even the even those stupid kids in antifa that are running around the yeah. only reason why yeah. they're in antifa is because they want to be part of a tribe and if you can, if you as a government can be like, here's your tribe, and this is the best tribe you're ever going to be in, and not only is not only are you going to come in here at this level, and we're going to make you at this level, we're going to make you better man than you are now, motherfuckers will join. We're going to give you a cooler uniform, and you don't have to carry around a 55-gallon drum shield. Motherfuckers will join, and that is what they need. They don't need any of this fucking woke bullshit because you don't you don't fight. You don't fight a war with gender studies, period. But the powers that be, they don't want that strong military, right? Because, no, they don't. They because don't they, because it's going because to be it's, used against them. Because it's a because it, a, a a functionally a functionally strong military. Well, I don't, I don't know because I would say that to have one world government, you can't have a strong would, U.S. military. I would say that, and again, I'm spoiled because I was in because I, I was at, at one nine and it was always Musoc. Um, I would say that those battalions. You know that if you think back to the '90s, the shit that the shit that the Marine Corps was doing, while technology-wise we are way more advanced, but from a battalion level, they don't do any of the shit we used to do. They, they don't do any of the shit we used to do. They just can't because of the because of the level of bureaucracy that's on them. That it's like, yeah, you got a fucking this cool ass laser and these bitching ass computers, but when it comes to actual war fighting, you guys can't fight your way out of a paper sack it's just when i and when i say that again the rifle squad the modern rifle squad the modern marine corps rifle squad is more lethal than it's ever been it's more lethal than it's ever been it's actions on the ground that make a difference and unfortunately for the last five years our actions on the ground have not been impressive they have not been impressive there is no fucking way that those Marines should have been killed in Kandahar at the airport. Not no fucking earthly way. No way. But that's because they didn't well, take the gloves off. It's well, it's it's because <clears throat> it, the reality is it's because they had weak leadership, and it's because they weren't doing. They were not allowed doing. They were not allowed. But they were not doing the things that they needed to do to ensure uh, safety of those Marines. Like period. what? They just they just weren't doing the right coordinating. They weren't doing the right coordinating. There's no way that should have ever happened. None of those, you shouldn't have had 17 Marines. You shouldn't have had that many Marines uh, that were even exposed to that capability. So the, the, one, of the, one of the guys that got blown up, he said that they identified one of the, the bombers. Like, they identified that dude an hour ahead of time. Well, they, the issue there he, is. He asked, he, I, I believe he asked, can I shoot this dude? And they wouldn't let him fucking take him out. The reason there is they create a level of bureaucracy that is so, for example, if... If Brandel comes in here, if Brandel comes running down the hallway with a fucking suicide vest on, and I see him. Now, in the old days, in the old days, I have authority. 
I have authority to execute that threat. So I would be like, oh, bad guy. Boom, shoot him. And then I would be like, hey, kill the bad guy. And they would be like, are you sure it was a bad guy? And you'd be like, I think he's a bad guy. And then they would send somebody out there and they'd be like, okay, it was a bad guy. You don't have that, you don't have that local authority anymore. Or you don't have that level of authority anymore. And when I say you don't have local authority, it's Brandel running down the hall. I'd be like, I would call the CP and I'd be like, hey, there's a dude running at me with a suicide vest on. And they'd be like, hold on, we're going to call the battalion commander. And then that, it would just go up the chain well, of command. Well, that's what happened. Like they had and that's to, why, and that's they, why that, that happened. But I'm, but again, that is a failure of command, period. If you, if you as a leader cannot trust your subordinates to execute the mission Meaning, if I have to call you to ask you if I can execute the mission, then that means you don't trust that I have the ability to execute the mission. And if you don't trust me to execute your will, then that means you are a fucking terrible leader because you didn't train me properly. Or or what that really means is there's so much corruption. It's not corruption. That, that guy just, on the ground would do what he needs to do, but it's not going to give the outcome that the people it's, pulling it's the not, puppet strings want. It's not necessarily corruption. It's cover your ass, right? It's because we have, in the military, we have punished so many people for doing the right thing that everybody hesitates. There's always that level of hesitation, right? So the company commander is not going to make, the company commander don't want to make that decision. I'm going to shoot it up to the battalion commander because I don't want the personal responsibility for the outcome of what's going to happen, which is that is leadership if you don't like for example if you were a company commander and you want to take the personal responsibility of what your company your entire company is going to do and you won't take the personal responsibility of executing your will then you should be fired period because you are not a good company commander you are a shitty company commander i should know as a company commander as a company commander i should know that my company gunny is going to execute the mission that is required. My platoon sergeants are going to execute the mission required. My lieutenants are going to execute the mission is required because I have properly trained them and screened them. And I know that they're going to do the necessary thing. And if you do that, if you, if you have the capability to lead from the front, which that is what that is, you have an unstoppable machine because it never hesitates. It knows what it needs to do and it never hesitates. So you have an unstoppable machine, but when you lead from the rear, and you're concerned about your next promotion, instead of the mission, 17 Marines get killed. That's how that happens. It's no different than, you know, when the Ospreys crash and they know that they were falsifying documentation to keep the Ospreys in the air. Nobody lost their, no colonel lost his job because of that. What would you have done at that airfield? Which airfield? It, when the oh, you Marines. just use, you just use, you would use, you would use standard coordinate uh, cordon procedures so no you can't you can you can't keep people from getting killed it's just the True. nature of the beast but you can mitigate how many people get killed you can mitigate how many people get killed so at no point in time should 17 marines have been in a position that they would have been killed like that that's just they the cordon was shit show it was i mean just go back and look. They were using Apache helicopters to push people off the runway. That's a shit show. Like, that is a shit show. That means that no one, no, I don't care what the fucking, I don't care what the little after action report says. That means that no one was in control at that airfield. No one. Now, a good company commander, even in that situation, if you were a company commander or a battalion commander, and you had Army, Air Force, all these people, and you you show up, and it's that shit show where they're trying to cordon off, you're, you're, they're trying to cordon off the airfield with helicopters. Again, accomplish the mission. And what was the mission? Secure the airfield. If you only have enough troops to secure a hundred yards, then that's what you do. You secure that that much space in order to create a safety zone for your Marines and anyone that needs to be evacuated. You don't just throw everybody into the shit show and go, try and, you know, 
try and keep people back. You don't do that. I mean, we <laughs> we had 10,000, one, one company, H&S Company. An H&S Company is not a fucking, H&S Company is not really a combat element, especially back in the day, right? H&S Companies were your cooks and your supply guys and all that. Now, Snipers was attached to that. What's H&S stand for? Headquarters and Service Company. Okay. So we did a med debt in Mogadishu. Now what a, a, a debt med debt. So what that is, is the battalion comes, the battalion doesn't come ashore. H and S company came ashore and they set up a facility to where Somalis could come in, get their teeth looked at, get a band aid, put on their boo-boo, get some candy and out the back door. We vaccinate them. I don't know if they did or not. Cause it, the, at the issue there is, I think we did vaccinate them for something. I do believe there was a vaccination. I think that's why we did it. Bill Gates polio vaccination. Uh, anyways, but the battalion really, uh, you know, a battalion landing team really doesn't have a ton of shit to just give away, right? So if you, you when you when you think about what battalion landing team coming ashore, and if I say, hey, we're going to help, uh, we're going to feed people, the battalion really doesn't have a, it doesn't have extra, right? We're not we're not carrying around a shitload of extra. So a little band aid. A piece of candy out the back door. Um, How long people stand we in had that ten, line for that? We, we again, we had ten thousand. We had ten thousand Somalis show up, and they were going ape shit wanting to get in, because again, if you're you know if you're in a place where you have nothing and you think America's giving out gold coins, you're going to show up. They had ten thousand people show up. We're fucking in sniper positions above. You know how they fucking managed it? One, one Marine Corps corporal with a fucking baseball bat. That's it. That's it. They mobbed the gate. He walked out the gate and started hitting people in the fucking legs until they got in line. And then he just kept walking down, hitting people in the legs until they got in line. And then when somebody stepped out of line, he would walk down and fucking hit him with the baseball bat. Everybody got their licky chewy and candy and their band aid, but it only took one. It only took one fucking Marine to keep those people in fucking line. It's the execution. It's the execution of the mission. Now, if CNN would have been there on the street corner and was like, holy shit, do you see that fucking Marine over there with the baseball bat? It would have been a fucking big deal. Like, people would have been like, oh, my God, I can't believe they were hitting these Somalis with a baseball bat. But you know what happened? The mission was accomplished, and all those Somalis got their licky-chewy. That's that's the thing that's important over all things, is accomplishment of the mission. Do you think they drew straws to see who got to smack people no, with no, no, I, 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 No, I know who he was. <laughs> I knew who he, I know the Marine that they that was chosen for that position, and... Uh, and he was he was more than happy to go out and hit people with baseball. Like like no, I mean I would expect there were probably ten dudes that wanted no, to hit no, people because with baseball because again, bats. again the the, and I don't know how it is now, but back then H and S Company was, you know that when you you think about H and S Company, it was really H and S Company. Like there was there was typists in there, and there was guys that still typed and shit. So it wasn't there wasn't how many baseball bats do you deploy with? I think he brought that with him. Just because he likes baseball, yeah, you'd be amazed at you'd be amazed at the crazy shit that gets pulled out when it needs to get pulled out. Like, uh, there's always a fucking guitar. Somebody's always how did you? Because you you know you're very limited on what you can bring on deployments because of space and shit like that. But there's always a dude with a guitar. There's always a dude with a surfboard. There's always this weird thing that pops out where you're like, a full drum set? Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> there's always something weird that pops up, and and. Uh, and a baseball bat wouldn't even be weird. I mean, I'm sure that if you checked, I don't know about today because, again, you guys are all soft. But I'm sure in 1998, if you were like, how many baseball bats we got aboard ship? There would be 100 bats. Isn't that like uh, MWR or something? Well, they would have MWR stuff. But then again, MWR stuff was all shitty. And so if, so if you had done a deployment before, you're like, hey, there's a possibility. We're going to be in the middle of the fucking desert doing nothing. And I'm going to bring my bat because 
I'm not going to use that. You know what I'm saying? It, people bring their own morale, shit. Morale, welfare, and recreation. Yeah. Uh, morale, welfare, and recreation. So it, it's just it's just about it's so just about dude, executing the if mission. If a dude had pulled out a baseball bat and started whacking people in the shins, that'd be on CNN, and we'd have him being tried nowadays. Probably, yeah. It would be a big deal because because everybody wants to cover their ass. You wouldn't have so the difference is this: we used to have leaders. We used to have leadership in the in the in the military in general. When CNN came out and said, "Oh my God, I can't believe they were using a baseball bat," it would be like better than a machine gun. Um, mission was accomplished. Everybody was happy. We used to have leaders that do that, but leadership doesn't do that anymore. Leadership is more worried about their next promotion than they are about about the quality of life or even the uh, even the reality is the current department of defense does not care about mission accomplishment. They don't care when they say, when they say, Hey, um, you know, we're going to go to our, we're going to go to war in Iraq. There's a mission statement. They put out a mission statement saying this is, these are all the accomplishments. They don't care. They don't care if it's successful. Cause you know what? Miley's still going to get promoted doesn't matter how many fucking, it doesn't matter how many kids get killed under his fucking terrible leadership. He's still going to get promoted. There's no consequences for general staff officers anymore. That is why they execute terrible plans and they never have, they never have a, a fucking idea of mission accomplishment. Never. They, they, Iraq, six months. Fucking six months. It should have been, it should have taken six months. Not only should it have only taken six months. But at the end of it, they should have been begging us to leave. If we had to go into Israel instead of Israelis, if we were in into there. Gaza, yeah, fuck. Well, okay. First off, Gaza, Gaza is so small. It, Gaza's not big. Um, what about all the tunnels and shit, though? Isn't there? Like it doesn't 12? matter. Tunnels don't mean shit, really. And I and I feel sorry for the fucking. Don't hey, um, just a just a reminder. If you are near a big, if you're near a big, open water source, and you're digging tunnels for your protection, probably not a good idea. Because we just fill them. Yeah, that's what the Israelis are doing. They're, they're pumping millions. Them. They're fucking pumping millions of gallons of seawater in those bitches. Really? Yeah. So, not a, not a good idea. You get further away. Make it harder for them to get the water there. Um, Gaza, 1st Marine Division. How many Marines is that? Uh, it's a lot. How many triggers? How many guns? It's a lot. Yes. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to do that math in my head because there's a master guns out there that's already done it. And it's like 4,200. It's, it's way more than that. But uh, what I'm saying is if, if you take a, you know, a, well, I'll say the 82nd Airborne, right? And you take the 82nd Airborne and you... Instill in and you instill the idea. You have leadership. You have leadership in place that instills the idea that the only thing that is important is accomplishment of the mission. Those fights are over soon, and we don't really need air assets for that, right? Those only, for, no. only for evacuation. I mean, well, you, you you'd use air. You 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 would use air assets for any time Hamas decided that they were going to hold up, right? Don't. What don't do those use, assets look like? What are we using? Fucking whatever's available. Would you rather have helicopters or no? No, it'd be fixed wing. It'd be fixed wing. Yeah. Okay. Anytime. So five hundred pound bombs. Yes. Anytime you. Anytime. uh, Anytime you have a, a. You know, like anytime Hamas, if they decide that they're going to stand and fight, like they're going they're going to be in the hotel or whatever, you don't you don't send trigger you don't send fucking trigger pullers in there. You fucking drop a bomb on it, plain and simple. You just drop a bomb on it, and you know what. Unfortunately, here is the here is the misnomer that people that people have gotten instilled in their head that for some reason doesn't make any sense. Um, unfortunately, civilians get killed. That's just the that is how war is fought. There, there's no there's no rule out there that says that only combatants, only armies meet out in an open field and fight each other. That's not that's not reality. It's never been reality. We always kill civilians now. We have gotten better at our technology to be able to localize that. 
Well, look at but World, we always kill civilians. Look at World War II. I mean, all through Europe, like there's there's entire channels on YouTube, and yeah. all they do is go to the civil defense fucking tunnels and shit yeah. because of all the bombing raids. Like everything on the surface was fucking rubble. So and those those populations survived from those even, tunnels. Even, even here in the United States, we were building that shit. What I'm saying is, you. If you are going to, and this is the way it should be, and unfortunately we have a fucking terrible political system and terrible leadership. Well, because we're, we're allowing people to have a voice that sways the battlefield who are not combatants and not fucking involved in the battle. Everyone should be afraid. Everyone, the entire world should be afraid of the dog getting let off the leash. If you want, if you want a vote on how the war goes, and then you go fucking fight the war. Well, I mean... The, the the problem is that that very word war. We should not we should not be allowed to have a U.S. service member any without anywhere in the world without a declaration of war from Congress. They should have to put money on the table, and they don't do that. They don't put no skin in the game. They just send kids all over the world to fucking execute some fucking bullshit. Reality is bullshit mission statement that is not executable. That has no end goal. There's fucking no end goal in Afghanistan. The end goal in Afghanistan is exactly what happened. We were going to spend a fucking trillions. Of, we would spend trillions of dollars, and we would fucking pull out, and it would be just the same as when we fucking started. No end goal, and that's why they allowed the fucking corruption in all the projects. Why none of the fucking schools got built? Why none of the water? It's really the Department of Defense needs to be gutted, and. They really need to start emphasizing mission accomplishment, period. And if you don't accomplish the mission, you should be fired. <laughs> Plain and simple. And that goes from fucking, you know, Joint Chiefs of Staff all the way down. Start firing those bitches. Start making people accountable for the mission success. And not only will the world be a better place, but your kids will be much safer. Period. That's just how it is. Your kids will be much safer. Like, right now... There are hundreds, there, there, right now there are thousands of young service members that have been pushed over towards Gaza. Not because the Israelis need us. The Israelis don't need anything from us. Nothing. They got this. this they got this. They don't need anything from us. They're being pushed over there because the fucking federal government is trying to bait people into attacking us. That means your government is using your children as fucking bait. Somebody's kids are going to get killed. Well, stop and think about who whose kids are out there. It ain't it ain't these Well, as you it, well, as you know, John, they're taking woke kids now too. <laughs> yeah, but it ain't woke kids out there in harm's so, way. So, you it doesn't matter. You're still using American you're still using American service members as bait. When you when you they do have you seen the the man on the street and he's like uh give me give me the who are you voting for this time? And they're like Biden. He's like, yeah, because the under Biden's under under Biden's control, um, our taxes are the lowest they've ever been. And then they, he's like, because our groceries, man, I get so many more groceries. I'm so glad Biden's are like, oh, you're a Trump tard, you're a Trumpster or whatever. Those motherfuckers, it ain't their kids out there in the military. Not a one of them well, people. Again, your your percentages are very low for people in the service, but but if you have kids. That's how you should be looking at this. Would you want your son or daughter to be being used as bait by the fucking federal government? not one of those motherfuckers has a kid in harm's way. Those people, I get their it. kids have fucking, they, they haven't even started paying their student loans. These I are the same it. people that went through the woke schools and the woke fucking colleges and haven't even worked a day of life. But I'm not talking to them. I don't give a shit about But that's them. the point. Those are the fucking people who are... The, the people screeching them. and we got we to gotta be soft on the fucking civilians. Their kids ain't out there in the fight. So, I mean, some of them are now. And I'm sure they've changed their idea. So back to, um, you would mentioned bomber vest. Have you ever seen a bomb vest? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen a bomb bomb vest factory where they, they got it. It's like a Ford factory where they're lining them up and so one old lady stitches the buttons uh, on and yep, another puts yep. the dynamo. So the guys from Surefire, I think it was John Standridge, I think, brought a bomb vest in. Yeah. And uh, I don't, I don't know how he ended up with it, but dude, it, it looked like some shit. It was so intricate. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's nice. It looked like Eagle made it or something, you know, super professional. I'm like, man, I wouldn't want to fucking have to sew this thing. There's so much to this. They had, uh, they had the explosives went in one pocket, 
and there was another pocket on the front of that where they would put these packs of ball bearings. And then there was a third pocket on the front of that where they would put like warfarin. They would put the rat poison in there. They, uh, and I'm like, what's that? He goes, because once that cuts you, that makes you bleed out faster. They would put the rat poison in there. They, um, the difference is that that's a, a cottage. So when you think about how, how things are manufactured, right? Um, that's a cottage industry, right? So it's a, it's a very cottage industry when they're putting those things together. And they're using real tailors and real seamstress, guys that were making suits before, yeah. right? They, they would, they could make you a, a ten thousand dollar Armani suit, and they're very proud of the quality, yeah. right? They and want, so they're making they, those, like yeah. those bomb makers. They want you to know that that was their work. Yeah, that's the biggest. <laughs> that is the biggest problem for them. Is they uh, the biggest problem for most? Their signatures uh, is they put their signatures on it, and that's how they end up getting caught. But again. You know, it's it's no different than the, the the it's no different than the Hamas guys going into Israel with fucking GoPros. Like, at no point in time is you having you have like. It would be interesting to know. It would be interesting to kind of to like know, like know some Hamas fighters from the perspective of of knowing what's going through their head, right? Like. I can't imagine, but then again, I'm not over there and I'm not on one side or the other, but I can't imagine that you plan for a year and then they're like, okay, that's what's going to happen. You're going to fly your paraglider into Israel. You're going to shoot up a bunch of people, get some hostages and come back. Okay. All right. That sounds good. That sounds like a good plan, but I can't imagine in your head that you're like, this is going to win the war. This is going to win it. We're when this is over, we, the, the, the Palestinian flag is going to be flying over Israel and the Israelis will be pushed into the sea. I can't imagine you would think like that. And so if you are not thinking that you are going to win a fucking GoPro video of you fucking in some kibbutz killing a bunch of old ladies is not a very smart thing. But isn't, haven't they been raised in that manner, right? They've a lot of those. I mean, a lot been, of those guys yeah. have been raised. They've known. They've never known freedom. They've been told about freedom. I, I yes, they it, have it'd been be raised. Like, a... It'd be like China coming in here and sequestering everybody and keeping them in the fucking high school for fucking twenty years. But you still have to have a sense of, especially especially in Gaza, and, right? Because and aren't they told even even if you die, you go to heaven and you get twenty virgins? But I mean, in, in Gaza, even in Gaza, there has to be this sense of. Um, there has to be this sense of there's no possible way. Like you, you, you have to have it in your head that you're not fighting. You're not fighting for an independent state because you're completely surrounded. You're fighting for, I don't know, a fucking more water or extra rice, or you're fighting for concessions that will get you at least a little more freedom. But the idea, the idea that you're going to go to war with Israel and somehow be victorious, I don't know if I could eat that cake. But in prisons, when the, when the riots kick off, it's, it's, it's a few dudes that decide that they're going to riot, right? The, if, if you're a white dude and the white guys kick off, the white guys are going to fucking shank your ass if you don't fucking riot. True. But at no point is any at no point in this is kind of what I'm going at at no point in the riot is anybody going yeah we're going to be in San Diego in a month right chilling on the beach right they know what's you're coming. never leaving that facility yeah they yeah. know what's coming they're going to um, doesn't GoPro I'm pretty sure my my newer GoPros they have a th a digital thumbprint right don't they automatically upload to the cloud if you've logged into that I'm pretty sure my footage automatically saves. And I'm pretty sure there's a GPS location on the footage as well. Maybe. What, and I would assume that if you have the option to toggle that on and off, that that motherfucker's just, it's just like this thing. Right. Everything you record, hey, baby, let me see your butthole. That, that fucking picture is someplace. Whether oh, yeah, you think a, it left your phone or not, they no, have it. No, it's at the NSA, and there's a dude in there downloading yeah, it all. Yeah, I mean, stuff. that chick had all them dick pics. Yeah. What were we talking about? Airplanes? Algerians. No Are Algerians from Al Al Algeria? Algeria. Mm -hmm. That's Africa, right? Somewhere. Somewhere in Africa. Did you hear some Algerians walked in and said, we're here to stab some white kids? Here? France. Oh, France. That makes sense. 
and they uh, stabbed some white kids apparently. And uh, one of them's name was Thomas. They did it in Ireland too. Well, I'm getting there. So oh. they, I think this happened sim- similar time, same week, you know, within a couple of days of each other, maybe, maybe the same day. So all the uh, parents up in arms, and they're they're like, these are all these savages that we're letting into the country, and this has to stop. So Parliament comes out, or some some governing body comes out and says, you will not have any protests or any um, walk out in the street to support, you know, Thomas, who died, apparently, is the, the kid that died from being stabbed by these Algerians that walk into this high school. Right? You know, I, I have the impression that they're between 16, 19 years old, maybe. So they go to the street. Parliament's like, we forbid this. You are not allowed to protest for Thomas. And they're, this whole thing's in support of Thomas. So they're going around and fucking just fires. And I mean, dude, from, from the aerial view, it's like the Million Man March, but with, actually with a million people. Like there are a fucking ton of people from like as far as you can see from the aerial views. It's not like the, the McDonald's shot where it's, you know, yeah. you see, you get the impression, but it's it's a fucking ton of people. And they are burning shit down. Good. And burn it, like Good. Fucking... Politicians they're, they're are at it. Yeah. Politicians. The only, the only job of a politician is to execute the will of the people. Yes. And so if you're, if the will of the people is not being executed, then burn that motherfucker down. Yeah. Your support is for the country, not the politicians. Burn that motherfucker down. Not the government. So at the same time or similar time, um, somebody, some guys again, go to the street and stab up a bunch of, um, Irish kids, children, like, like three year old, five year old, six year old yeah. kids. And uh, they're like, We're, we've had enough of these savages. This is this is going to stop. So the spin on it is that the right wing, yeah, it's is, right wing it's, extremists. It's the right wing. So Conor McGregor comes out and goes, yeah, basically he says, yes, this isn't going to end until violence is brought upon mm-hmm. these people. So now they've passed this this law over. Oh yeah, there. they want to arrest Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah, they want to extradite Conor McGregor. I guess he's still here in the states. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've passed this super vague anti-bullying law, and even somebody in the parliament there says, this is so vague, like, you could arrest anybody for anything. Mm-hmm. And the chick, that she goes, that's exactly it. We didn't arrest enough people last time. It has to be vague to make these people think twice about what they're yeah. going to say. Right. And that's how they want to control you. That's why they, all through the last three, four years, they strike you and ban you and block you on social media, all your community guidelines, because they want you to think twice right? No, before you speak. So Conor McGregor's putting this out there that he might run for president for Ireland and Spearco. We did a live yesterday. I mean, Conor, the, the, yeah. Conor you, McGregor. You have a dude who has run a business. But Conor McGregor, he really should let them arrest him. He really should let them extradite him and take him back to Ireland. They don't want that shit show. They don't want the shit show of putting Conor McGregor on trial for some fake ass fucking bully. Have That's- you seen? Have you seen the people running the government over there? Oh, they're all shit show. It ain't fucking. It ain't Irish mother. What? What? When you think Irish, what does mm. Irish look like? Beautiful redhead. Looks like Cormac O'Hanlon. Yeah. Redhead, fucking white, white dude. I wasn't thinking of a dude, John. Dude, they have these are women over there. All their all their people look like they're fucking Indians and shit. Well, it's because again, we we are creating this importation thing where to dilute you, to dilute you, and that's why the, there is no pure blood. It doesn't matter about pure blood in the sense that they're diluting to the point where you don't have a say as a country. Because the reality is that's the point. The point is to take all these countries and turn them into something that's not a country anymore, so you can have a one world government where Brussels is pulling the strings and telling you what farts you can fart and what cows you can eat and what cows you can't eat it's just it's bullshit but the problem for them is the 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 real problem for government the real problem for government is the the people that they're allowing into these countries are savages they're not they're not controlling and because they're not controlling they are going to do the things that they want to do and that is how you get popular uprisings and a popular uprising Again, just like I said about the United States, right? Everybody's comfortable. We're all just in our own little worlds, doing our own little thing. It takes a lot to get it takes a lot to get people riled up to the point where they're going to execute some sort of mission plan. 
And when you get enough of them to execute a mission plan because, you know, Boobaloo Fufu is over here stabbing kids at the park and we've had enough, the problem is the collateral damage, right? The problem is there's going to be collateral damage. There's going to be people that are going to be hurt, killed, or injured that didn't have anything to do with it. But again, that's because they weren't keeping their own people in check. They weren't policing their own situation. And so that's what's happening in Ireland. So the people coming the people coming across the border, right? Some of those people want to come here and work. But I don't think most of them want to come here and work. I think they want to come here and rape, pillage, and plunder. That's why they're sending fucking military-age men without fucking females, without families. Look at all the people in, in Chicago. Look at all the fucking police stations in Texas. I don't believe that. Okay, but look at all these places, right? You have all these people. And they've opened up, and they're literally pissing in the hallways of the fucking police stations right now. O'Hare Airport, right? It's a fucking refugee camp. Why aren't those people going and getting jobs? You have Why a, won't they let us hire those people? You have a super influx. You have a super influx of a lot of people that are, that are coming. Say, okay, but let's say Venezuela, for instance. They Venezuela. emptied the fucking prisons. The prisons 100%. are empty. That's who's across if, our border. It, it True. But, but they've put 11 million people into this country over the past year. If if what you're saying is real and that those 11 million people came here to plunder and rape, we would already be at war. You're, you're talking about numbers. You're talking about numbers that are so high that we would already be at fucking war. This country would already be on fire. It's a, it's a very small, because even, it, let, let's just look at, let's look at like a refugee situation, right? Even if you only have, even if you only have 1% of that 11 million that can't find employment, can't find, you, they're still going to be everywhere, right? There's still going to be dudes shitting in the streets. There's still going to be dudes pissing. There's still going to be dudes committing, uh, you know, petty theft in order to survive. That's just 1%. You can't condone you. You can't condemn the rest because of this one percent. It yes, it is a complete failure of our government to not recognize the damage that they are doing. But again, when you think about the numbers, I'll give you. I'll give you an example that you that you can understand, or not that not that you don't understand that. There's five million plus. There's there's five million plus people in active duty uniforms for the United States. Okay. Millions. Okay. The Department of Defense just came out with a study about extremism in the military. Okay. They just came out about extremists in the military. They seem to come out with one every 90 days. Well, they came out with this about uh, talking about 2021 and about how, how the military is super extreme. And there's all these extremists in there. You know how many, do you know how many cases they had? 183. That means out of millions of U.S. service members, they had 183 cases that were linked to extremism, okay? Now, they write this whole fucking article about extremism in the military and how terrible it is and how they're trying to overthrow the government. 183 people can't overthrow the government. Not only that, not only that, what did the 183 people look like? Are we talking, again, are we talking white dudes? But again, what kind of extremism? But again, they never explain crazy, it. crazy fucking sell your pussy shut extremists. But again, they never talk about that. They just talk about right. all the extremists in the military. Right. And then in the last paragraph. So remember I said 183 in the last paragraph. DOD investigates and finds that 63 of those people were wrongly accused of extremism. So now your number is even lower. What those to, really were were Trump voters. To think, to think that you could have four fucking million people and own and to, to and be like, oh my god, we have an extremist problem because we had 183 people that said something we didn't like. Well, it's just like that's not a problem. It's just like white supremacists in the sniper community and the SSs. That's not a problem. Well, I mean, Staff Sergeant Terry. Yeah. It would always end with Terry. That was the, that was the best. The but black, the black guy. It would always end with Terry. Oh man, he's he's a great guy. Anyways, but the, what I'm saying is, your percentages are so low that if if you read that article, you think that there's you think that there's a problem because they're writing this article. But if you really do the numbers, that means the military does not have a fucking problem whatsoever. Like it's not even a, 
You, why are we even keeping track of this? That's not even a real number. It's not a fucking real number. So it's it's a bunch of goddamn horseshit that again DOD is pushing. It's everybody. Fuck. Well, it's your January six guys. I, I mean, your fire. sky marshals aren't flying right now because they're still tracking January six people. Yeah, well, that's because and we the have foot f- the footage is out. We have a we have a very very broken government. You are occupied. You have very broken government. I'm not occupied. I live in Waverly, Tennessee. Right. Your government, yeah. the powers over you. I live in Waverly, Tennessee. Those are controlled they, by somebody else. Those motherfuckers, they don't even know I exist. They're coming after you with that shirt. You better get a flare gun. <laughs> the dare shirt? You got a flare gun. I'm going to go nerf. That, that'd be a good video. John holding a flare <laughs> gun. John holding a flare gun, blowing out the pilot lights in the kitchen. <laughs> Why do you think there's not more killdozer, guys? Because we're comfortable. That dude, that, 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 that dude apparently wasn't comfortable. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. They boxed him in. He had, the, re, the reality is that city gave him no choice. Like, they gave him no choice. They boxed him into a corner, and they got what they deserved. Because, first off, everything they were doing, everything that they were doing as far as zoning and compliance was about greed. It was about them making money. And so they boxed him in to the point where he couldn't make money. Again, what, ha- what what does that mean? He wasn't comfortable. He no longer was comfortable with the life that he was living, and so he executed a plan that you know, cost the city some fucking money. Nobody died except him. Yeah, cost the city some money. Have you ever heard of the term? It would be real hard to get. I recently heard a term, um, vote from the tree line. Yeah. Have you heard that? Yeah, but it's it, it was. Uh, vote from the rooftops. So I've never heard that. Until I think I just heard it a couple of days ago. Yeah, vote for the. It used to be, you know, ten years ago it was vote from vote from the rooftops. Is that because the Koreans? I don't know if it's because the Koreans, but yeah, vote from the rooftops, and it was a fucking sniper rifle too. Well, that's how um, enemies foreign and domestic. Right? Matt Bracken wrote that book. He was yeah. a SEAL intel guy. He wrote three books: enemies foreign and domestic, and then the second one was uh, foreign enemies, and the third one was domestic enemies, I believe. And the third one actually took place here in Middle Tennessee, like right here in Middle Tennessee. Um, But in book one, when the politicians were doing shady shit, there was a a long gunner, fucking sniper, took a, I don't know, 700-yard shot. I don't remember what it was, but smoked this motherfucker on a golf course. And that just started happening. Fucking these people who were voting this heinous shit in just started getting fucking smoked. And there was just enough people. And it wasn't organized. It was just... Some fucking angry, like, just fucking felt wronged dude with a fucking 03A3 or something. Mm -hmm. And he just smoked this motherfucker. And it just started happening. And when a couple of them started doing it, more people like, hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's that shot heard around the world, right? It only, how many does it really take before it starts becoming a thing? It it actually, it, it actually takes a lot. It takes apparently. A, it takes a lot. My well, theory is that it does happen, and they don't publicize it when they know what it is. Well, you, they don't want. I mean, you know, if this. Nancy Pelosi got shot. Yeah, somebody said uh, it, there's a there's a TikTok video that's going pretty hot right now. Went up a day or two ago. It's got several hundred comments on it. I don't remember what you said. It was you and I talking about. Um, I said Big Mike's going to be the next president, and you said no, it's going to be um, Newsom or whatever. And people are like, no. Um, it's going to be Kamala and then the next one. And people get super mad when I say Kamala. Um, and it, it's, it's a trip. The, the people commenting on this video, it almost looks like it's bots or something like they might not. It, it's a, it's just bizarre how much traction this yeah. is getting and how these people are finding that account. Um, but they're like, Nancy Pelosi's the next runner up. There's no fuck that bitch. Ain't, if she's even alive right now. Well, she, she's already said she's not. And uh, what is she? 80? She's already said this is her last She can't time. physically drive herself. How the fuck are we letting these people run a country? It just is what it is. Only because we're allowing it. It just is. Well, again, that's the that's the issue, right? Um, you want to fix you want to you want to fix the country? I can I can tell you one thing. There's only there's only one thing. When they here. wrote the Declaration of Independence, how old were those people that signed? Oh, they were like thirty. That's right. They were young. That's right. Well, there's only one thing. It doesn't matter. It, again, it doesn't matter how old they are. There's You only have to do one 
thing. You only have to do one thing in order to fix all of it. We could fix it all just by doing one thing. And that's hold them accountable. Period. If Who you, holds them accountable if they hold the FBI? If you if if we held them the, accountable, the people it who would, would over, over the people it, who would fucking execute those warrants are busy executing warrants on fucking. Okay, again, the, the only reason why the only reason why they're that the DOJ is as corrupt as it is, the only reason why that air marshals are following around people that bought socks on January sixth is because we are not holding any of them accountable. We are allowing the government to run amok because we are all comfortable. All of us are comfortable. We live in our little houses and watch our little news footage and we're all comfortable. We're not holding them accountable, period. We don't hold them accountable. So if I don't hold you accountable, you're going to do whatever the fuck you want. And every now and then, you're going to do something that's fucking crazy. Like you're going to do something where you're going to be like, I'm sure they're going to get me now. And then nobody like, does anything about it. Like burning up a bunch of kids in a school bus in a fucking in Texas, that kind of crazy. Yeah, whatever whatever you need to do. You're going to do stuff that's you're going to do stuff that that like blowing up blowing up an Asian dude in fucking near Washington DC with a flare gun. With a flare gun, yeah. I'm just saying that that's the issue. The issue is the issue is Americans, patriots, liberals, democrats, republicans, doesn't matter what you are, we're all too comfortable. We don't hold anybody accountable for shit. We just let people do what they're doing. It's just like, you know, I do it too. That's Washington, D.C. I don't give a fuck what happens in Washington, D.C. I can't do anything about it. But if enough of us got together, sure shit, we could do something about it. We could hold them accountable. And then, you know, the truth is politicians should be afraid of their constituents. Not that they're going to get beat up or killed. But their job should hang in the balance. There is no fucking politician that is in the House and the Congress that is worried about elections. They're not really worried. For the most part, if you're in, you're running unopposed. Who's the uh, congressman or senator from Louisiana? I don't know. Clay Higgins. Clay Higgins. He was a sheriff, and he had this whole war against this gang and challenged them and shit. But he was up. He said some. He said some amazing. Uh, Second Amendment stuff on C-SPAN. And he was there talking before, I don't know, some some hearing. I think it was Mitch McConnell or somebody. And he, deer hunting. And he's like, the Second Amendment's not for deer hunting. The Second Amendment is for the people to protect themselves against the government. And McConnell's like, what, what do you mean, the government? Slow down there, Democrat. And he he was just baffled to hear that the people might overthrow your corrupt government, right? right? That that's what that, that's actually what that second amendment is for. And it's like, it had never, he had never fucking heard it before. I'm sure. Yeah. It's just, it's the party line. I think it's all theatrics. Oh yeah. A lot of that is just, a lot of that is just theatrics. Cause, um, because they're being watched on C-SPAN. There's not even an audience. There's nobody in the chambers while they're doing their thing that C-SPAN shows right. a lot of times. But they need the theatrics in order to get the to get the votes to get the whatever. It's there's a marine. His name's Sam. Um, he's got a YouTube channel. He's been building shorts and stuff. He's been here. I believe you've met him. He set up as a vendor here. Yeah. He's an alumni, tech response guy, and he made a video talking about how uh, he's just hunting how he would fight right. And he's his loadout. He's like, I just was out hunting deer. And I had 16 mags, and I know people are going to take issue with that, but I believe that if you're out there, you should just train how you might have to fight in the future, um, live and die with what's on your back kind of I, stuff. I wonder, if, I wonder if he could get in trouble for that. No. I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to that. I don't, I don't know. So, Well, I'm just, you know, because of but how what many he's, bullets you can have to fucking kill. Because you, did the, you talked about 13 mags, you talked about 22 mags. And he said, you know, I was recently recently listening to an interview with a Vietnam veteran, and he said, you know, every time we went out, we had 30 mags. We always had 30 loaded mags, and then we had more ammo in the backpacks, and yeah. and it, it's just it it's turning yeah. right. We've had you and I have had these conversations over the last six months, year, and now there's a lot of you gear. Have to, Go ahead. No, what I was gonna say, you have to be careful. You have to be careful when you take a piece of history, and you push it to the front. Okay. And this is the only reason why I'm saying this. You have to be careful when you take a piece of history and you push it to the front. When a Vietnam veteran says, I carried 30 mags, he was carrying 20-round magazines. 
No, he and this guy, this this guy addressed that. He goes, I know you guys are going to say twenty round max. He said he was not carrying twenty round max. I do not believe that you could have got a thirty round max. Okay, so or maybe he said he was carrying. I mean, yeah, you now maybe maybe I missed something. So there's a lot of gear companies out there right now, and some of the some of those companies are led by SF guys, right? There's SF yeah. guys running big gear companies. And we're talking LBVs. We're making videos about LBVs over the last year, and they're all popping back up with videos about LBVs now. This is the new war. This is how we're going to fight. It's not going to be from vehicle. So we were right, or they're watching our shit, or probably some of both. Yeah, I think it's just I, everything has to come full circle. Mm -hmm. Everything has to come back around. What, we um, always come back to the large mountain ruck. Yeah, we, it, it always has to come back full circle. And, uh, you know, I, I again... Don't don't carry the don't carry the amount of ammunition for the fight you think you're going to get in. Carry the amount of ammunition for the fight you know you're not going to get in because you can't. It's one of those things. When you're out, you're out, and you can't feel sorry for yourself because you you brought six mags to a fucking ten mag fight, and and I and I get it. People are going to be like. You got to hit what you're aiming at and shit like that. That's a person who's never been in a fucking gunfight. 100%. You might, might want to look up break contact. It might has never been in a gunfight. And then the other thing you need to take in consideration with any weapon system, doesn't matter what it is, your pistol, your rifle, your your machine gun, if you're cool, um, is the rate of fire. Will what's, you, the, what's the sustained rate of fire of that weapon system and what's the max rate of fire of that weapon system? And then you need to think. You really need to think to yourself. If I... Do I have enough ammunition to be in a fight that's two minutes long, three minutes long, four minutes long? Because that's the only thing that matters. No, there's never been, there's never, you will never find a recorded piece of history anywhere where war fighters went, we had too many spears. We, I don't know why we carried all these spears. I don't, why did we pack all these rocks? Never once. Never once have you ever heard that. Now you've heard it from people who've not been in the fight. People who've, you know, have been in the rear with the gear. And I understand if, if all you do is open MREs for war fighters, you don't need those magazines. Because the war fighters have them and the war fighters are keeping the wolves from eating your fucking family. Period. You listen to audiobooks at all? No. What do you do when you're out during the day in the field? Like when I say in the field, out on your property, right? You don't you don't have earbuds in, you no. listen to music no. or anything? I don't listen to anything. You don't have a, a you got an old boombox with you or something. Sometimes I'll sometimes I have the the radio going, but not not often. It's just another the the problem is if I'm out doing something like whatever if I'm going to cut down a tree. It's another thing I have to carry with me. It's another piece of technology I have to be like, oh, are my fucking earbuds charged? Is my fucking phone charged? You're it, absolutely right. It's yeah. another fucking thing that I have to wear, and I, so I don't I don't I don't deal with it. It's like for example, I I was gonna do I did a video yesterday. Right? I, I wanted to do an unboxing video. I got this thing in the, I got this thing in the mail, and so I do this whole setup. I'm gonna do it on the mini truck, and there's gonna be a fire, and there's gonna be all, and I'm gonna do this unboxing, and so I'm getting all my stuff ready. Every time I see your fire, I'm like, man, I gotta step my fire game up. But it's so much fucking work. It is work. That's what I'm saying. The set. When I watch your video, a five minute video, I'm like, this motherfucker. This must have taken him five hours. To it do took. This. A, it always takes an hour to set all the shit up. Yeah. But so, anyways. And then by the time it's set up, the fire's out. I. Uh, I get my I get the I get the mics out right because I'm going to use the fucking wireless mics because SOE provided wireless mics so I'm going to use fuck them. I still don't have them and uh, and so I open the thing I get my little mic on I put it on and then I take out the I take out the 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 transmitter the master and I push the button fully charged right it's fully charged I'm like awesome put it on the belt close the kit head on out. Get out there, get everything set up. The sun's right, everything's perfect. Get the receiver, put it on the motherfucking camera. Get everything set up, make sure everything's perfect. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, probably hour and ten minutes into this. Push the button on the fucking receiver. Dead as a motherfucking doornail. So, I have to fucking now go back, plug this motherfucker in and charge it. So it's, it's like, you know, it's, it was two o'clock when I was doing this. I'm like, okay, it's probably gonna take an hour. Okay. I keep everything on the truck, keep everything ready. Throw this thing on the, throw this thing on the charger. 
I go fart around a little bit in the garage. Clouds come in. Dude, yeah, I got black here. Clouds come in, black. So now I can't film outside. Right, I can't film outside. When she went to the post office, she's like, hey, it looks like it's going to storm if you got anything in these hand. I walked outside, dude, it looked fucking nighttime. Yeah, clouds come in. It's now 3 o'clock. It's got enough charge on it where I can do a video, so I'm thinking, okay, I'll just put everything in the dog kennel, and I'll do it from inside the dog kennel. No, too dark in the dog kennel. It's not working. I can't get it to fucking work, so I'm like, fuck. So I have to just do it against the garage door, which, you know, I spent five hours trying to do 15 minutes of video because of fucking piece of technology. I hate fucking technology. These lights yeah. are battery powered. And one of those tubes would have allowed you to do that inside the dog kennel. True. True. But again, another but piece have, of technology. I have your solution. What's that? You need that black LMTV up the road. Why? Because you could have all your batteries and everything. That could just I be could, your mobile yeah, command center. It could be a mobile command center. Now, if I could just get my Patreon guys to up their game, then I could buy that LMT. How many Patreon members you got? I don't know. A couple. Like two or three. Uh, I think you have more than yeah, I have. Two or three Patreon. So we can, we, if you, Patreon, <coughs> if you guys want to step up your game, we'll get a black LMT. Shit, I don't even have multiple. I, I only have one level of Patreon. I didn't set none of that up. I don't know how the Googles and the bots do all that stuff. I can't believe. And he pisses me off every time because I'm like, let's just give all this shit away. <laughs> no, we can't do that. We can't just, we can't just give it away. I'm like, you don't understand how much shit I have. I just, uh, you know. I don't know. I could probably give tan gear away for the next year. Give away ACU gear. I don't have any. No, but everybody, we can go yeah. get it if yeah. we need it. I don't have fucking any. everywhere. I'm trying to get rid of the, the stuff that's the, in, that's piled up around my neck. The hotness right now is to take ACU and, and dye it like multicam black. Uh, uh, the ones I see is dye them green. Yeah. Yeah. So they turn out like multicam black. Yeah. Dye them green. Got it. But that thing needs to be charged. So what I, I don't really need a... Uh, uh, I don't really need another piece of equipment. I need a s- assistant. You need a Jackery. No, I need an assistant. You need a Jackery like or a Blue Eddy or whatever. Five foot that, six, auburn hair. All that shit just fucking, you just have it in the bed. of the, You have Milky it in skin. the back seat of your Tundra. And the battery pack's there and everything's plugged That's into right. that. And then you've got little batteries plugged that into never the big works. battery. It always works. Uh, assistant would be much better. What do you want his name to be? I don't think a I don't think a he fits that position. I can't have a female assistant. That's true. You can't. Anyways, I don't know. I need an assistant. That's re- I need somebody who's going to make sure that the batteries are charged. You need a gay guy. No, I don't want a gay guy. Flamboyantly gay tech guy. I don't want a gay guy. Man hating lesbian tech might, he tech might, woman. He might convert me. I mean, it's man hating lesbian. Tech it's, woman. it's bad enough. I get lost in Brandel's eyes every day. Imagine if, imagine if Brandel was gay. Okay. All right. On that note, are you ready to do some Patreon questions? Let's do Patreon. All right. Pulling the thread podcast episode 52. Thanks for participating. Um, you got your EMP shield stuff put on yet? No, you said you were going to have the guys do it. How do I put EMP shield on? I'd mount it to the roof or something. I don't know how that fucking shit works. EMP shield. You ever been lightning struck? I'm I'm listening to so the reason I was asking about your do you listen to audiobooks uh Angry American is a writer who has written 12 books and it it's the first one is like the long walk home or whatever I I don't remember what it's called but it's it's this dude and he's got a family and they live in this kind of rural sub kind of out in uh, out out of the major city in this little subdivision and uh Something happens, EMP goes off, cars all stop working, all the electricity goes out, and he's got to walk home. And it's just the journey home. And then he gets home, and um, one, of the, one of the dudes ends up, get, he get, ends up getting shot on the way home, and this dude knows this other guy, and they take him to this guy, and he was a ex-Army dude. Old, crusty, reminds me of Earl Emery. Like, that's who I'm thinking uh-huh. of the whole time as the gunny. And uh, he has some friends, and, and basically... They, um, FEMA has kind of taken advantage of this. There was actually a, something happened, knocked power out, but the power started to come on back around the world. FEMA, um, or the government powers that be take advantage and make it worse in the United States and they make it illegal to have a radio. So you're supposed to turn your radio into law enforcement. Then they start collecting firearms. You're supposed to turn your firearms in and it just, it kind of goes from there. Right. But you've got the DOD guys 
that are like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing this. So you have some guys that have some air assets and then you have FEMA is kind of the enforcement they're using in the post office. So you have a post office guy who's kind of going out doing a census and he has a FEMA dude with him and uh, they're conscripting basically going around. Hey, what do you, what do you do? What are you good at? And they're breaking families up and dudes that seem like they're going to push back, they go in and they burn their houses down and kill their, their families and shit. So that's kind of where it goes. But the suppressive fire thing, right? You've got these dudes that have kind of linked up. You've got some three-man teams that have kind of been tasked to go out and do this. And they're like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing this. And then you just kind of disappear off into the wind, right? So there, there is some air assets a little bit, but you've got dudes with equipment and shit. And you've kind of got these factions, um, which would be, you know, the soft groups and getting support and stuff. And they've just kind of disappeared into the wind. You saw it happen in like... Um, um, in a non enemies foreign to domestic, um, 299 days, you had the same type of thing happen where a Marine unit just took off with some five tons and filled up as much shit as they could. And they went out to this training facility where it was a, a dude that had like some swick boats and shit. And he trained, um, in Mississippi, trained some of the seal platoons. They would go through kind of like Shaw's right? and they became basically, um, pirates. You know, and they were just fucking doing the waterway shit. But you see that in all those books. And, th like, when you talk about uh, six mags or ten mags or whatever, that's that suppressive fire thing. And that's all through those books, right? Just breaking contact. And especially if you've got dudes with machine guns shooting at you and shit. So, um, but EMPs in all of those, right? And in all of these books, you have guys that have a little bit of solar and kind of like an off-grid shed for their ham shack. Right. And that's always in there, right? So... We can we can war game and and play those stories out and that, like when I said I haven't been listening to any social media or anything I just get caught in the social media right. right I'll be listening to it and it'll end and then it'll I'll be looking for something else and before you know it I'm like fuck I've been standing here 15 minutes trying to decide what to listen to and I've wasted 15 minutes of my day four times that's an hour that's a man hour right so when I put on the the prepper fiction or whatever. I can just go and do my tasks and I yeah. don't have to, to, to mine that through there. Um, but whether we know what's going to happen with EMP or not, these fucking things, these EMP shields protect you from lightning strike. Lightning strike. And we have several power um, meters on the property. The, the newest one we've put in controls the gates out front and we did not EMP shield any of that stuff. And last winter, when all of that power was surging, it fried my controller for my um, for my drivers for my electric fence for one of my gates. And by the time it was all said and done, with the service coming out and getting the the parts, and then of course, oh no, it's not under warranty. It was fourteen. I got a bill for fourteen hundred bucks, and that would have all been prevented by a two hundred dollar box from EMP Shield. Did you put it on there already? Of course not. It's sitting right here. Oh. Okay. It's right. It's right here. Right. Um, I like to get the guys that are the best in their industry and have them do something right. that they're not the best at. Like Billy Bond from Perma Pastures. Billy Bond is an awesome fucking Perma Pasture dude, and he's awesome at anything permaculture and food sustainability and all that stuff. Right. Um, what a lot of people don't know is he was a trade electrician, and he put in our EMP shields in there. Hmm. Um, so. No, of course I haven't. I've got a box full of these that still aren't on some of the vehicles too. Um, but EMP Shield, and if you guys use code SOE at EMP Shield, it'll give you $50 off your order. So check that out if that's on your radar or you think you might like some of your stuff to work if the grid ever did go down. Um, and it'll also protect you from lightning strike, and they insure you on each circuit. Everything behind this box, they cover up to $20,000 per box that you have on each of your um, circuits. Nice. Would you, uh, have you heard they're about to do some controlled burns in a bunch of the TWRA uh, no, units out here? So there's some big control. They're about to do some really big burns, which is surprising because we're under a, a really big burn advisory warning. We can't light a fire right now. They won't give you a permit for it, right? I'm always of the belief, let's just light the fire and see who shows up, just like the gas line, you know? Um, but they're going to light these big burns. So imagine if a little bit, because we're under a drought. We're like under a year-long drought right now. We have the lowest water um, 
in in Tennessee and fucking it's always historic low, yeah, right? Historic, yeah. Um, I, I see that the duck ponds are all full and the hunters are all out there in their boats. That's because they open the locks or move yeah, the locks yeah. or whatever. You can't be too. It can't you, be. It can't I, be too bad. I'm with you. So imagine if uh, if they got these huge control burns going on and it got a little bit out of control and went the wrong direction. And it was coming towards you, right? You know that you have three hours to evacuate and right. you're starting to get ash and shit. Would you put on a respirator or anything at that point? You should. So. For large particulates, uh, smoke will go through most of them. So there's a company called Mira Safety. And Mira does all kinds of gas masks. They do PAPR systems and the, the positive pressure systems, full suits. They do stuff for children. They do a two-piece so you can wear it with goggles, with a helmet and different things. Mm. Um Mira Safety is not a sponsor. We don't have an affiliate code or anything with Mira. Why not? We, my lack. My lacking oh, really okay. just haven't reached out to them probably. I have Mira. I have a Mira um, Papa. But, you've got the, but you have the, the regular face ones too, right? The, uh-huh. The half? Yeah. I think, it's a, I think it's a solid product. But if you guys are interested in that stuff, check out Mira Safety. I need one of those for shooting the suppressor. They have them. Anyways. They have them. I know. I know. Did you want to thank any of your sponsors? I don't have any sponsors. Sure you do. What sponsor do I have? Uh, I just start naming them out. When If you name them enough times, they'll just start sponsoring. I wish they would, especially Victus. Victus? I wish Victus would sponsor. You'd like to thank I'm, Victus I'm, for those sweet shoes the right there? sweet shoes? I'm, I'm actually in the, I'm going to buy another pair because these have turned into my everyday pair. And I need like, you know, my sweet, sweet, sexy going to meet and shoes. And could so you I'm imagine? Could you imagine? I mean, just, just weave the picture could you imagine if katanica started making shoes they would have the problem if this is the only thing i'm gonna say about katanica if to can if they started making shoes there'd be too many pockets on there <laughs> that's what chris there's costa there's pockets, said on my post the other day he's like the pockets have pockets there'd be pockets everywhere you i mean you could carry a lot of shit in your shoes but it, i think they would put too many pockets on it i think chris is just upset that he hit up katanica and they're like we have enough gun guys <laughs> You don't have Chris Costa gun guys. They're like, we're not really into lever guns. They, they definitely they definitely don't watch his videos. They're like, if we do single action pistols, we'll hit you up. Yeah, I mean, they definitely don't watch Chris's videos because he's perfect for he's perfect for them. He lives in the Great White North. I don't think yeah. I don't I've never seen Chris in a pair of shorts. Well, because you you're never supposed to wear shorts. I wear shorts all the shorts time. Shorts are shorts are just like crocs. They're a crutch in an emergency. Have you ever seen um, Idiocracy, the movie? Uh-huh. Do you know the shoe in there was Croc? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember and that then detail. They, didn't they take the, uh, didn't uh, Camacho, the wrestler, become president? Yes, he was the president. And what was Bondo? We dump it, we pour it on plants. Was it, it? it was Gatorade. Gatorade? Yeah, it was Gatorade that they used. There it was too go. salty. That's why the plants won't grow, you dummies. All right, guys. So EMP Shield, use code SOE at empshield.com. And uh, that was episode 52. Thanks for participating. We're going to go over to Patreon now. If you would like to join the Patreon, uh, it's SOE is the Patreon over there. You guys ask questions, and we build the video for Patreon off of your questions. Scully has a YouTube channel called Dog, Kennel, and Little Spoon. He also has a Patreon and does unique videos over there. And those videos are based on the questions you ask. So if you want to speak to Jeff directly, without me interrupting Jeff all the time. That's where you'll do that at, Dog Kennel and Little Spoon. Check him out. He's on Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, MeWe Locals, OnlyFans, Foot Fetish. He's everywhere. Just uh, look up Dog Kennel Little Spoon. Um, man, if they go looking at at porn channels with Dog Kennel Little Spoon, they're probably going to find some weird shit they're not ready for. Yeah.